14 million was the population of Zimbabwe in 2021. 14 million was the combined populations of Illinois and Nebraska states. 14 million was also the number of postpartum hemorrhage cases in the world in 2021. Postpartum hemorrhage is the leading cause of not only maternal death, but also is the major cause of women's early death. The word postpartum hemorrhage comes from post meaning after and pattern, which is childbirth or delivery. Hemorrhage means bleeding. Postpartum hemorrhage, also called PPH, is a heavy bleeding after giving birth. Heavy bleeding means here more than 500 mils after vaginal delivery or more than one liter, which is 32 fluid ounces, irrespective of whether it's a normal delivery, gazillion section. Additionally, the delivery can be so messy, making it difficult to assess the amount of blood loss. Also during delivery, there can be a possibility of internal bleeding and or hematoma forming into the pelvis, leading to concealed postpartum hemorrhages. At last, a small blood loss can also sicken a mother who is already weakened by anemia, malnutrition or other diseases in pregnancy. That were other definitions called postpartum hemorrhage, qualitative definitions come in. In fact, postpartum hemorrhage can also be defined as any blood loss after delivery leading to changes in mothers, blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, and oxygen saturation, or any other clinical signs or of significant blood loss leading to shock and or postpartum anemia which are dizziness, reduced blood pressure, fast heartbeat, fast breathing, and so on. For this reason, the short shock index has also been proposed to define postpartum hemorrhage, but that is a topic for another day. Postpartum hemorrhage is also defined as any blood loss leading to a decrease of hematocrit of 10% or more from the baseline. It is important to know that in postpartum hemorrhage, the most important question is not how much blood loss is, but how much agent's help is needed to restore the mother's stability and safety. We recommend you to watch this video to the end because this information is powerful and saves women's lives, builders of nation. Thank you. According to the moment it occurs, we have two types of postpartum hemorrhage. We have primary postpartum hemorrhage occurring within the first 24 hours after delivery and secondary or late postpartum hemorrhage occurring in 24 hours to 12 weeks after delivery. Though most PPH are primary and usually happens within 6 hours after childbirth, it's very important to mention that awareness and monitoring for postpartum hemorrhage should be continuous until 12 weeks postpartum. According to the United Nations, around 140 million childbirth occur every year in the world. Asia is the continent with more childbirth within 25 childbirth in childbirth in India and 16 million births in China alone every year. Postpartum hemorrhage is relatively common and it involves between 4 to 10 percent of childbirth and which is about 40 million every year, the equivalent of the population of Belgium and Qatar combined. There are a few reasons why postpartum hemorrhage occurs. The placenta attached to the wall of the uterus and provide nutrient to and oxygen to the baby during pregnancy. After the baby is born, the uterus continues to contract to deliver the placenta. This is called the third stage of labor. These contractions also help to compress the blood vessels where the placenta was attached to the uterine wall, and this contraction continues few weeks after delivery. Sometimes these contractions are not strong enough to stop the bleeding. This condition is called uterine atony or lack of uterine tone and is the cause of up to 80% of postpartum hemorrhages. In this condition, the uterus on the examination is soft, spongy, and boggy. Postpartum hemorrhage can also happen if part of the placental membrane stay attached to the uterine wall. This condition is called the retained tissues. Number three, if part of the reproductive organs are traumatized during delivery, there can be also a postpartum hemorrhage. The trauma can come from the baby traumatizing the cervix, the vaginal walls, or the perineum. It can also come from medical instruments during an episiotomy, a caesarean section, or vacuum extraction. The situation is called trauma to reproductive organs. 
Number four, you are also at risk for BPH if you have a blood clotting disorders or certain health conditions. This condition can be remembered as thrombin disorders from the prothrombin, which is called the coagulation factor 2. Major causes of heavy bleeding are then summarized by the mnemonic 40s, which is first T, lack of uterine tone, second T, retained tissues, third T, trauma to reproductive organs, fourth T, thrombin or coagulation disorders. And in most cases, risk factors associated to BPH are not identified. But when identifiable risk factors for BPH can be grouped under the mnemonic pattern, people for prolonged labor, for polyhydramnios, or previous uterine scars due to caesarean section or myomectomy, this condition can lead to uterine muscle fatigue. A for antepetum hemorrhage. R meaning recent history of bleeding. T for twin or triplet or other multiple gestation. U for uterine fibroid. 6M for multiparity or multiple pregnancy and medication such as magnesium sulfate, tebutaline, nifedipine, halothane, salbutamol, etc. In these conditions, there is overstretching or repeated uterine infestation interfering with efficient hemostatic uterine contractions, leading to diminished tone or uterine atonin. A full bladder can also interfere with proper uterine contractions. Postpartum hemorrhage is an extreme emergency. The treatment has two goals. Goal number one is stopping the source of bleeding as fast as possible. The second goal is replacing the blood volume lost. Some of the interventions used to meet the two previously mentioned goals are emptying the bladder, uterine massage to help the muscles of the uterus to contract, medication to stimulate contractions, removing retained placental tissue from the uterus, repairing laceration, vaginal, perineal, cervical, and uterine tears, picking the uterus with sterile gauzes, tying off the blood vessels, using a catheter or balloon to help put pressure on the uterine walls, uterine artery embolization, blood transitions, and in rare case, when other methods fail, a laparotomy or a hysterectomy can be done. A laparotomy is when an incision is performed in the abdomen to locate the source of bleeding. Hysterectomy is the removal of the uterus. In 2014, the Indians Chandrahan proposed a logical sequence of management options for major postpartum hemorrhage, which is the mnemonic hemostasis. Hemostasis here means that whenever you have a PPH, you have to number one, H, shout for help, number two, assess and check vitals and resuscitate. E. Establish the causes of it or etiologies of among the 40s and 6 risk factors for postpartum hemorrhage. M. You have to message the uterus. O. You have to administer oxyto 6, which are drugs that contract the uterus. And if this doesn't work, then you have to shift the patient to the operating theater. T. You have to temperate. To tamponade the uterus after you have ruled out retained tissues and regenerative genital organs trauma still if this doesn't work then you have to apply compression sutures which are billing Hayman and square sutures among others and perform a systemic pelvic devascularization or opt for interventional radiology if available if all this doesn't, doesn't work, then you have to perform a subtotal or total hysterectomy, which is the removal of the uterus. We have to note that if nothing is done, a PPH leads to death within minutes or hours. The only and best place where a woman must deliver is within a hospital setting because hemostatic hemostasis cannot be performed elsewhere. In view of all these considerations, it's important to mention that women need to be followed up and advised not only about postpartum hemorrhage, but also about other reasons why women die. We recommend you to watch our previous videos for more information. 
and Dr. Eric, this channel is aimed to deliver information that promotes health and holistic wellness as well as many other lifestyle safety tips. All the information provided on this channel is tailored for holistic health educational purposes. Wow. If you are subscribed yet, remember to subscribe now and activate the notification. Do not forget to like, comment and share our videos with friends. Thank you for watching this video on postpartum hemorrhage. See you in the next video soon. Sayonara.